Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. After emerging in the early Eocene, cetaceans were the only group of mammals to entirely sever their ties to the land, spending their entire lives in the water. By the end of the Eocene, cetaceans had rapidly expanded in size and proficiency in swimming, producing forms such as the enormous apex predator Basilosaurus. This animal, and its significantly smaller relative Dorodon, possessed highly reduced hind limbs, paddle-like flippers, and fluked tails, all features that would be inherited by more modern cetaceans. At the end of the Eocene, drastic global cooling led to the extinction of the majority of archaic proto-whales, with the two living orders of cetaceans becoming far more numerous in the following Oligocene. Indeed, Basilosaurus-like ancestors gave rise to both the Odontocetes, the toothed whales, and the Mysticetes, the baleen whales. While the latter gradually moved towards a filter-feeding niche, the toothed whales retained the active, carnivorous lifestyle of their ancestors. After an establishing period of a few million years, recognisably modern Odontocete lineages began to appear by the end of the Oligocene, roughly 25 million years ago including the subject of today's video, the Physeteroids. These are the most basal living toothed whales, with only two genera still with us in modern times, being the massive sperm whale of the genus Physeter and the pygmy sperm whale of the genus Kogia. The former is a deep diving carnivore, hunting cephalopods at depths of up to 2 kilometers or 6,600 feet below the surface. Sperm whales utilize their cone-shaped teeth which are present only in the lower jaw, to grab hold of slippery prey, including both the giant and colossal squid, which in turn fight back by lacerating the whale's skin with hooked tentacles and suckers. However, the whales are almost always the victors in these encounters, given the vast size difference between themselves and their prey. Indeed, a large adult male can measure up to 18 metres long and weigh in the region of 70 tonnes. Females are smaller on average, and live in communal pods along with their young, while males are either solitary or form small bachelor groups. Physeter contains only a single species, P. macrocephalus, and possesses a cosmopolitan range, inhabiting all of the world's oceans, but generally sticking closer to continental shelves. The other living Physeteroid genus, Kogia, is far smaller than the sperm whale, Containing two species, K. breviceps and K. simus, known as the pygmy and dwarf sperm whales, both are small cetaceans, measuring up to 3.5 metres, or 11 feet, and 2.7 metres, 9 feet, respectively. Like their much larger cousin, these animals feed primarily on squid and are greyish in colour, but rely on a suction feeding mechanism to capture prey. Indeed, their skulls are far shorter and rounder than that of the greater sperm whale, giving the creatures a somewhat porpoise-like appearance. In addition, their eyes are small, instead relying on echolocation in order to find squid and small fish at great depths. Sightings of both species are rare in the wild, with most scientific information concerning them gained from beached individuals. Both are found in mid-latitudes of the world's oceans, generally preferring warmer waters away from the poles. Despite the small number of living species, physeteroids were once far more common and diverse. During the Miocene, when the oceans were significantly warmer than today, cetacean diversity as a whole was much greater, including a vast array of forms. The Miocene can be considered a golden age for these animals a period which came to an end during the Pliocene as global temperatures began to fall. Physeteroids thrived in this environment, with several genera being active carnivores. Often collected together under the name of the raptorial sperm whales, these animals did not form a defined family, but were instead basal members of Physeteroidea. Unlike modern sperm whales, these animals possessed teeth in their upper and lower jaw, while the form of the teeth themselves were far more robust and suitable for grappling with large prey. This was clearly an adaptation for hunting prey that were not soft-bodied cephalopods, but instead for tackling other whales, large bony fish and sharks. In all, there were four genera of raptorial sperm whales that thrived in the Miocene, inhabiting a ram-feeding niche that is today taken by orcas. 
As a matter of fact, killer whales only appear in the fossil record after the extinction of the predatory physeteroids during the Pliocene. The smallest of the raptorials was the genus Acrophyceta, native to the western coastline of South America during the mid to late Miocene, between approximately 13 and 5 million years ago. In life, the animal measured up to 4.3 metres or 14 feet long, and possessed a short pointed skull equipped with large and deep rooted teeth. These anatomical traits suggest that Acrophyceta preyed upon contemporary seals, penguins and other smaller whales, remains of which have been recovered from fossil sites in Peru and Chile. Interestingly, Acrophyceta also lived alongside the semi-aquatic marine sloth Thassalochnus, with this animal also likely falling prey to the toothed whale. A larger raptorial genus, Brigmophyceta, dwelt at a similar time at the opposite end of the Pacific Ocean. Often referred to as the biting sperm whale, the type species B. shigensis was recovered from middle Miocene rocks in Nagano Prefecture, Japan. The genus is estimated to have been around 7 metres or 23 feet long, being roughly comparable to modern orcas in terms of size. Brigmophyceta had enamel-coated teeth in both jaws, unlike modern sperm whales. It probably had 11 or 12 teeth in each jaw, though no upper teeth were preserved in the holotype. The skull measured about 1.5 metres or 4.9 feet long and had an elongated snout. Other animals recovered from the type locality include some of the oldest oceanic dolphins and Rorqual baleen whales, which would almost certainly have formed a part of Brigmophyceta's diet. Meanwhile, a genus of similar size terrorised the ancient Mediterranean region during the late Miocene, Zygophyceta. Also measuring up to 7 metres, this raptorial is only known from a single specimen recovered from southern Italy. Unlike its close relatives, Zygophyceta appears to have possessed a beaked snout, giving it an appearance more comparable to a large dolphin or ziphid beaked whale. However, the teeth were clearly adapted for handling large prey, and the animal was likely a ram-feeding hunter, targeting other whales, large fish and seals. The teeth at the front of the jaws were conical, useful for grabbing prey, while the rear teeth were stout and used for cutting through flesh. The largest and most famous of the raptorial sperm whales was the genus Liviatan melvilli, named after both the biblical Leviathan and the author of the novel Moby Dick. It is mainly known from the Pisco formation of Peru during the Miocene era, about 9.9 .9 to 8.9 million years ago. However, isolated teeth from other locales such as Chile, Argentina, South Africa and Australia imply that either it or a close relative survived into the Pliocene around 5 million years ago and was present across the southern hemisphere. This would make Liviatan the latest surviving raptorial sperm whale. In terms of size, the animal was comparable to the modern genus Physeta, with large males estimated to have reached up to 18 metres long and weighing in the area of 70 tonnes. This would make Liviatan among the largest predators to have ever lived, alongside the contemporary giant shark Carcharocles megalodon. As both carnivores likely targeted similar prey, in this case being smaller baleen whales, their existence in the same ecosystem suggests just how diverse and populous ancient whales were during the Miocene. The teeth of Liviatan were even larger than those of its shark competitor, measuring up to 36 centimetres or 1.2 feet long, and were massive and sturdy in construction. It has been inferred that this apex predator hunted prey in a similar manner to modern orcas, pursuing it to exhaustion and then drowning the unfortunate animal. The carcass would then have been ripped apart and eaten alone, as the sheer size of Liviatan meant that it probably hunted singly. Although other cetaceans formed the majority of Liviatan's diet, the whale was capable of feeding on all other aquatic species with which it shared its environment, including sharks, seals, marine sloths and large seabirds. Liviatan and the raptorial sperm whales as a whole became extinct by the early Pliocene, likely due to a cooling trend, causing baleen whales to increase in size and decrease in diversity, becoming co-extinct with the smaller whales they fed upon. Even relatives of modern sperm whales fared poorly beyond the Miocene, with a total of 11 genera reduced down to just two. Today, their niche has been taken by orcas, and if it weren't for human interference in the oceans, 
we could expect the development of even larger predatory forms in the next few million years. We can then only marvel at the remains of these extinct giants, and imagine a world in which these leviathans made the oceans a scarier place. Thanks for watching everyone. Next episode will cover more speculative evolution content, so I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.